Hello, this is the RPG Crawler, and welcome to my top 5 PC role-playing games of 2015. I'll be focusing on PC games simply because I'm not that big a console player right now, uh, which is a damn shame because there were actually some decent uh, console RPG games released this year. Um, maybe next year, maybe after I get a current-gen console. Uh, but for now, we'll focus on the PC. In order to make for a more manageable list, I've had to set some basic ground rules. First, the RPG had to have a commercial release in 2015, that is, a no freeware games. Second, it had to have been a proper full release, that means no early access games, so things like Darkest Dungeon are right out. Third, I had to have played it, so there will be PC games that are notably not on this list, simply because I could either not run them, or I did not really feel they were a good investment. Um, as for the actual games themselves, I'm sure you will find several problems with my list, no doubt, because this is a personal opinion list only, and it is heavily biased towards my old-school genre stylings. Now, without further delay, let's take a look at number five, Undertale. Released on the 15th of September, this was developed and published by Toby Fox. It is available on Steam. I will put a link in the description below. It uses the Game Maker Studio engine, which is actually pretty impressive for this particular game. It's not a bad engine, despite all the shit that people give it. Um, basically, a child falls into a world of monsters and must find its way back to the surface. Uh, Retro-styled graphics at the JRPG interface hide a surprisingly deep game. The combat system, such as it is, has either a variously playing uh, bullet hell style mini games to dodge things, or uh, moving a slider style attack strength selector to attack, or you can simply engage your opponents in conversation, find out what they like, what makes them work, and basically disarming them that way. There are always clues, so you can get around them without combat. Um, this game came out of nowhere, and it was really well received. Uh, I think I can see why. I was reluctant to play it at first, because it is not my usual preference of games. Uh, however, once I did start playing it, I enjoyed it immensely. I might end up doing a Let's Play of it in the future. Uh, there seems to be a focus on story and puzzle solving with it. I, I clearly did not play the entire game, but that seems to be the focus. Uh, and the NPCs, from what I've seen, are incredibly endearing. Uh, they're really made to get to you. Um, considering that it is not my usual fare, and the fact that it interested me as much as it did, uh, speaks volumes for its quality. Next on the list, number four, Serpent in the Staglands. Released the 28th of May. It was developed by Whale Knot Studios, available on Steam and GOG.com. It uses the Unity engine, as many games do these days. Uh, you play a god locked in a mortal form. It uses a, a dark fantasy setting with an overhead isometric view, uh, pixelated low-res graphics, and an FMV-style animation in the cutscenes harken back to the early 90s graphically, but it is done incredibly well. The interface and conversation options all seem like something plucked from the golden age of DOS gaming. It seems to be a genuine role-playing experience, not just an exercise in tactical combat. You can create an entire party full of weaker avatars and then replace them as you find proper companions during your travels, or simply start going it alone. The game actually recommends that you uh, start with an entire party. Combat seems to be pretty brutal and is done in real time, or so it seems. Exploration is a slow but methodical thing that rewards careful looking around. NPCs seem to be extremely in-depth, and everything seems to be geared towards maintaining that dark, almost brooding atmosphere all the way through. Uh, but it does not seem to be going overboard. Reading the manual is a must. It is one of those throwback games where you absolutely have to know what you're doing. I did not do so before re recording the gameplay footage scene, and it really shows. Like many of the early RPG greats, you really do have to learn the interface in depth. You cannot just assume that it's going to be intuitive, because it's anything but. 
Spending time to learn it, however, will reward you with a very deep game. Uh, by the way, the online manual that's uh, linked to the game is just awesome in and of itself. It almost feels like having the manual in your hands. I want to like this game more. Uh, it hits all of the right nostalgic notes for me, and it seems designed for my personal tastes and tone and setting. The steep learning curve can dissuade some. Uh, I have no doubt that it. I'll, I'll take another look at this game in the coming months, may even do a playthrough. I don't know. Next up, number three, The Age of Decadence. Released on the 14th of October, it was developed and published by Iron Tower Studio, available on Steam and GOG.com. It uses the Torque 3D engine, which I actually forgot still existed until I saw this game. Um, it is a unique post-apocalyptic fantasy setting, more really ancient world than medieval fantasy, kind of like the fall of Rome if it had been obliterated by magic rather than crumbling under the weight of barbarians. Uh, it's got an in-depth skill-based character system. Uh, initial professions are merely set beginning skills and allegiances, and make no mistake, the allegiances to various factions are critical in this game. Your skills and your reputation amongst the various factions can change due to the, your actions in the game. Uh, it's a development point throughout. Combat is pretty brutally hard, but it is turn-based. It's action point-based, hearkening back to Fallout and Arcanum. Uh, in fact, you can go. You, you can identify many aspects of the combat that were uh, basically not necessarily ripped from those games, but heavily influenced. Uh, it has its own twists in combat. Uh, combat can be lethal in a way that represents the idea that even a hardened mercenary can have their throat slit in a dark alley if they're not careful. I mean, it is it is pretty brutal. I'd actually been looking forward to this game coming out for some time, uh, unlike the prior two uh, that came out of nowhere. This one has actually been on my radar for quite some time. Uh, between the rather unique setting, the uh, depth of the interactions available, the raw difficulty, it definitely qualifies as being a pretty hard school old a hardcore old school role playing game, easily earning its place on the list. Now, number two, The Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt. You knew this had to be on the list somewhere. Uh, released in on the 19th of May, developed by CD Projekt Red, published by CD Projekt, it's available on Steam and GOG.com. Uh, uses the Red Engine 3, an in-house engine that will also be used for Cyberpunk 2077, which is another game I'm looking forward to. Uh, it's a modern action RPG with a dark fantasy setting that really kind of reminds me in a way of, of Ravenloft. Not necessarily the whole myths thing, but the, the fact that monsters and magic are, are not necessarily things that are seen as good by a lot of people. Uh, a number of settings details that give it a really... A really medieval feel, and yet are also anachronistic. Uh, it, it, it's odd because it actually feels genuinely more medieval than a lot of other fantasy games, and yet it tries to blur the lines a lot as well. Um, you've only got the one character uh, at a time kind of deal. Now you do have different playable characters as the game goes on, uh, but it's not like you create something from scratch. Uh, it's a very open world to a point. Uh, combat can be challenging, but once you get the controls down, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I think they did a, a, a wonderful job on the cinematics, and the environments can be really breathtaking, even in the kind of gimp settings that I have right now. Uh, Geralt is my kind of badass, really, so that that's a plus factor. Um, I love this game. I would love to give this game the number one slot. Um... But honestly, this is RPG Crawler's top five rather than just generic top five. And unfortunately, this game pushes my system to its limit, even on its absolute lowest settings. I am seriously in need of a new rig, and this game kind of drove that forward. Um, another thing is I actually hadn't played any of the Witcher games until I played this game. So I played a... F uh, not a huge amount of it, but, you know, enough of it to realize, hey, I need to go... I don't necessarily need to go visit the, the prior ones, but I, I would like to. 
So I went back and uh, actually started with The Witcher 1, and I will be getting to The Witcher 3 again at some point. Um, you don't need my confirmation that this game is awesome, since just about everybody else has already said it. <laughs> so that's where it is on the list. And uh, finally, this just leaves number one. My favorite number one RPG of 2015 is Pillars of Eternity. Released on the 26th of March after an excellent Kickstarter campaign, uh, it was developed by Obsidian Entertainment and published by Paradox Interactive. Um, basically, Paradox did more along the lines of just distribution rather than uh, rather than a lot of uh, heavy involvement. Uh, it is available on Steam and GOG.com. It, too, uses the Unity engine, a uh, high fantasy RPG inspired by the older Infinity Engine games, and it shows through and through. It has a richly detailed custom setting, a new IP, basically, a storyline that ranks right up there with the greats of old. Uh, you can develop an entire party or pick up companions as you go. Uh, although I should admit that the whole develop an entire party thing is after you reach the first inn. Once you get to the inn, you can basically make additional adventurers. There is a crafting system in which you can craft food, scrolls, and potions. Uh, there is a enchanting system in which you can upgrade certain parts of your gear. There is a stronghold you can clear. And um, combat is tactically challenging. It's real-time with pause-based uh, activities. It is uh, vaguely reminiscent of Dungeons & Dragons 3rd Edition, but with a lot of uh, tweaks. And, of course, it is customized enough to set it apart from that. You can see the Dungeons & Dragons roots throughout, though, in the names of spells and various abilities. Um, many of the hardest fights can actually be bypassed simply by uh, using your social skills to talk your way past them. Uh, the skills actually make a serious difference out out of the combat. There are various cutscenes and so forth where it switches into a text mode, uh, reminiscent of a choose-your-own-adventure style game. And uh, a lot of those use skill checks uh, in order to determine which particular option you qualify for. And, of course, there is a Mega Dungeon, which is entirely optional, very hard, and is always a plus in any game. I'm loving the Mega Dungeon. Um, this one has got to be the best RPG I've played in a considerable time, and I'm already looking forward to replaying it. Of course, I have done a Let's Play of this one. I will put a link in the description below. Uh, it is available on my channel, of course. Um... All in all, Pillars of Eternity has me looking forward to what else Obsidian does with the IP going forward. I might got to assume that they're going to do a, uh, a sequel to this at some point. I can only hope that it becomes as epic as the Baldur's Gate series does over time and shall be remembered for years to come. Um, and with that, that wraps up my top 5 RPGs for the PC of 2015. I know that, as with any list, folks will likely disagree over certain placements or even the inclusion or exclusion of certain games. I hope that maybe a few of these on this list will invite people to investigate them. Maybe they haven't heard of them. Um, as you know, uh, they may take uh, may take a look at, uh, for instance, Serpent the Stagland, which I certainly didn't know about until the last minute, but it was impressive enough to make it on the list. Uh, if you like what you've seen, of course, or remember to like, leave a comment if you have one, and subscribe for more RPG content. Until next time, take care and goodbye.